everyone, welcome to another top 10 list and I'm going to struggle to get through this one because A, I still have a bit of a diffy throat from the cold I had last week. Secondly, I'm rather exhausted because I've done HandyCon and PortalCon in the space of two weeks. And thirdly, because this is the second time I've had to record half of this video because I forgot to switch the microphone on when I did it the first time. I don't know. Yeah, one of those things that just happens. I wish I had a backup source, but I'm experimenting with the microphone here rather than there, and I forgot to switch it on, and just... Uh, uh, stupid. Oh, well. Needs must. Let's go through it again. This is my top 10 ugly games I still like. Now, I talk a lot about aesthetics and how they, you know, you know, they improve a game dramatically. I want to see nice artwork, vibrant and colorful, that brings the theme out and just, like, showers me in theme. But there are still some games that I like, despite subjectively, obviously, this is a subjective list, this is just purely opinionated, these games are ugly as sin. They're not nice looking games, and despite that, I still enjoy them. However, it's definitely noticeable that most of these games are brought down in my expectations because they don't look great. I want nice artwork, I want things to look good, is that too much to ask? You know, some people aren't fussed by that, and fair play to you. You know, you can play pretty much any game out there, no matter what it looks like. You know, splotters around the corner, go play their games, for example. But, yeah, come on, I want something nice looking. However, here are 10 games that I still like despite their horrible look. And for this, it's a balancing act. It's not just simply, right, okay, what's my 10 most ugly games? No, it's a balancing act between how ugly I find it versus how much I like it. What does it, what's the impact? Do I really love it despite it being pretty ugly? Is it really ugly, but that means I don't like it as much? You know, how does it all work out? So, a very subjective top 10 list, but I'll be interested to hear what yours are like in the comments as well. Without further ado, onwards. My number 10 was a toss up between two racing games. One of them recently was restored, but I don't know if it's, it's such a simple palette and it is an older game that's been restored that I don't know if I want to call it so ugly it makes the list. Maybe it could be an 11 or 12, but this other racing game was a very innovative one. It brought bag building and racing and combined the two. Certainly nothing we've seen before. And it's a solid game. You've got all these different cards that are the gears for your car and things like pit crews and uh, you know different tires and different suspensions. And each one has a different effect. But when you're drawing the cubes out of the bag, you know the the, the sort of red, blue, yellow ones. Each one determines which ones you can use in a given turn. It's a cool mechanic. It's a cool game. And with the expansion, it got even better. But AAG have definitely put out some nicer looking games than automobiles. The cover is probably the nicest thing in it, and the cards are alright, so I've seen uglier games, but I do really enjoy this one. However, when you look at the track, the boards, the main focus of the game, this giant board with you racing on it, it's not a particularly good looker. You've got some pretty basic cars that go around, and then the, the track is basically just a bunch of greys. It's like there's so much grey, and then some black, and then some white, and then the occasional bit of colour. It's not a looker. And it does make it a hard sell to get it to the table, especially when it's a very Euro-style racing game. But it's still a solid one. I still enjoy it. I just wish maybe it had a nicer paint job. And this is AEG. They can put out some pretty decent artwork every now and again. I mean, you know, Mystic Veil much? And, you know, it seems weird that this one just for some reason, despite being a good game, isn't one that's a big looker on my shelf. So... You know, I mean, uh, to be fair, I don't know that many racing games that are the best looking games in the world. They usually have to sacrifice a bit of art for the rest of, well, actually Camel Up 2nd Edition, but then that's technically betting on a race. That doesn't really count. But, you know, that sort of thing. It, it's not a looker, but I still enjoy it. Automobiles from AEG. My number nine, I am not getting off the shelf because I've already done it earlier and I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, so this one is in a box now. I've got a box set for all these cards and this is the original game that brought deck building to life. The original one that brought the genre into into fame and is still popular to this day but is, was like the bee's knees of people's choice awards in the past. I'm of course talking about Dominion, the original deck builder. It's a solid game. I still love it. I, I hate playing it with new players because I want to play it with people who, who not necessarily are veterans, but 
who understand the game enough that a turn sequence is basically like J -j 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 -j, next, J -j -j -j, next, J -j -j -j, next. You're practically machine gun firing all these turns out because people understand at least how to quickly come up with a plan and work with their deck. But yeah, not a looker, is it? <laughs> the backs of the cards are pretty generic and the artwork is inconsistent across the entire range. They never, even in the second edition, they bought a second edition of this game out and they never updated the artwork. It still looks bland and in some cases just really bad. There's occasionally some moments of good artwork where I can go, oh, that picture's not bad. But then you look at some of them, I mean, the acting troupe, the village, the baron. I'm just naming cards off the top of my head because I looked at them earlier. But yeah, some of them just look abysmal. But you're playing the game so fast, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's still a very enjoyable game. And occasionally you do get that one card that has good artwork on it. And it's like, well, if I'm buying multiple copies of that, then my deck looks fairly good. There is at least color throughout these pictures. You know, it may not be the best looking ones, but at least there's color. And, but yeah, when you're looking at deck builders in general, I mean, Valley of the Kings, there's not a huge amount of artwork in there, but it's still better than what's in Dominion. And of course, if you want like really nice artwork in a deck builder, then go see Star Realms, you know, for that kind of thing. But still, really like it. The original deck builder, still a great game. I am fed up with all these games saying, oh, we just tossed in a slight deck building mechanic just to throw in something else for Eurogame. <laughs> and it's, can we just get back to making a game that is a pure deck builder now? Although, what twist would you throw on it? Because let's face it, Dominion, Star Realms, and Valley of the Kings. And the Marvel Legendary series. Is there really any other deck builder I can think of that's really stood the test of time? Because those ones are the big ones. The big ones. But I'd like to see another pure deck... Oh yeah, paperback, that's another one. Um, I'd just like to see another pure deck builder. I don't feel like we've had one in a while. My number eight is also in a giant crate, so I'm not getting it out. Especially as this one is a very big and heavy one. But I've also just mentioned it. Some acute listeners might remember from the last number. I literally spilled the beans by accident. And I'm talking about pretty much 90% of the Legendary series. Marvel Legendary has gotten better. It started off pretty bad, but recently the artwork has got better and better. And I, I particularly like the uh, Marvel Noir. It was a small expansion for the Marvel Legendary. That was a really good, nice one for artwork. But yeah, it's not great. But it's colourful, it's got the superheroes on it doing what they do, and it's really cool. But then when you look at their other spin-offs, oh boy. Alien was not great. There are some cool pictures in it, mostly because of the gore factor. Um, but then there's a bit of an inconsistency between which ones are pretty good and then the ones that are really, really bad, like some of the character-specific ones. But then it gets worse after that, because then you have Predator, and everything just looks a bit weird in that one. There's very little great artwork in Predator. And then you've got like the MCU legendary they're doing now, and the Spider-Man Homecoming, and X-Files, where they use screen caps, I think. Boring! Seriously, if you're going to use screen caps in your game, that's just lazy and I don't like it. But the one, if you want to put one on this list and not have it as a catch-all of all the legendary games, then look no further than legendary Firefly. Oh my god, this is one of the ugliest card games I have ever seen. It's, it's not so much that it's, I mean, there are maybe some games that have got less on them and can be considered more ugly, but the artwork that is used to this game, who greenlit this game? Seriously. Who looked at these cards and thought, yeah, this does justice to the Firefly license? Because, I mean, have you watched Firefly? No? Seriously, go watch it. It's an amazing show. But, you know, cancelled way before its time. Thank you. And it's kind of, it's, it's, it's like I say, great series. Decent card game. Horrible art. The character models in the Firefly one just look so bad. These are like the stuff of nightmares. It's that horrible. And for that reason, the Firefly Legendary has been sat in the box up there and hasn't come out in a long time despite being good. Because I have to stare at these cards constantly as I go through the turn. It's like, all right, I'm going to go buy a Zoe card and I don't want to. Oh, God, fine. All right, next up I'm going to buy... Uh... Oh, God, why have I... I've forgotten her name. How can I forget her name? Oh no! I'm ashamed to be a firefly guy. Oh, the the, the mechanic. Oh, the, well, oh well, let's say River. River's always cool, but how can I forget the mechanic? 
She's like my favorite character. She's just so gorgeous. I love her. You're going to burn in a very special level of hell. Brain moment, hit the moment. But like I say, all these characters I love from the series, and I have to look at these cards where it's like you've defaced them, you have mutated them into this horrible entity. <laughs> that deserves to be in a horror film. It's so, so bad. So still like the game, but yeah. It needs a lot of work. It really could have done better. I would, I would have actually taken screen caps over the artwork that is in this game. Is it? Is it Haley? Oh, that's going to do my head in now. Don't put it in the comments. I'm going to find it out on the, you know before the next number. But yeah, legendary Firefly. <sighs>Kaylee, how could I forget her name? Honestly, Kaylee. Right, but yeah, other than that. Number seven, yes, this one is, I've just noticed that some of the ones on the list just happen to be on this side of the wall. I swear that like, my ugly side is over here. Well, for the most part. This one is the game I like to use as my bare bones area control game. You've got Sushi Go for drafting. You've got uh, um, b -b 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 Sushi Go for drafting. Oh yeah, and you've got the river, the new one from Days of Wonder for worker placement. But this is my bare-bones area control game, and it is one of the ugliest games I have ever witnessed. So much so that I haven't brought it out in a while. And it isn't even a top 100 game. It's, it's in the top 150, but yeah, it's, it's slipping a bit. Still a good fun game with some good replay value with those cards. But some people defend the look of this. What are you smoking? Ethnos is ugly as sin. This one, I mean, the cover is bad enough. A bunch of browns and browns. There's a browns with some blues thrown in. It's like, yeah, it's not exactly great. But then you take a look at that board. The back cover already looks bad. I mean, look, you don't even need to focus on this. You can tell there's literally nothing on this back board. But that, oh my God, it's like this really basic matte thing that you see on like those old fashioned globes. And then a bunch of squares and tiles. And that's it. The rest of it is just blue sea. It looks horrible and it is ugly. I mean, the card artwork is average, but even then it could have been a lot better. It still looks very bland and muted. But the board itself is so bad looking. And some people will defend, oh yeah, but the graphic design is good. It's nice and easy to follow. Yeah, it's easy to follow, but it's not difficult to mess up graphic design when it's literally nothing there to mess up. <laughs> you know, come on. A little bit of flop, a little bit of gloss over this would have been nice, okay? I'm sure you could have kept the graphic design still simplified and still, you know, improved the picturesque quality a bit. And considering Cool Mini or Not brought this over, yeah, they didn't make it originally, it was Spaghetti Western Games. But seriously, could they have not just revamped a bit of the artwork? It's so ugly. But still an enjoyable game. The cards that you play with different races, they change up each game, you only use six of them, and they can create some very different gameplay experiences, as some will be better at area control, some are better at collecting the sets, and you know, the turns are super quick, it's like, draw or play, draw or play, that's literally all you do as an action, and so even in a five player game, I mean, this goes up to six, isn't it? Yeah, it goes up to six, even with five or six players, it's still super, super fast. But it still scales well as well. Two to six players I will play this with, no problem. I just wish I didn't have to look at it. That's the problem. <laughs> it's so ugly. So it's enjoyable. But certainly that look has put me off wanting to play it a bit. You know, and like I say, it's a very bare bones area control game. There's not a huge amount to sing about, but it does the job well and stays in the collection because occasionally I need a bare bones area control game. But... I don't want to look at it anymore. I'm putting it back on the shelf. <laughs> it's like, I can't look at this game no more. Number six, I enjoy a lot more. It's a top 100 game for me, but uh, despite being a game that is not one I would expect to like, I would normally think, oh yeah, this is a boring theme and I don't go for the designers that much and it's not even a publisher I go for. Why would I want to play this game? Sam Healy used to rave about it. He doesn't anymore, but he did have a period where he used to talk about it. And I thought, okay, I'll buy it. It got reprinted. It's probably out of print now. And I really enjoy it. American Constitution is a theme. Not the first thing I'd go for. And But the gameplay with the back and forth of the voting, really, really cool. But <clears throat> would you like to play this game? Founding Fathers. Look at that brown. Look at, oh, that brown, look at that brown. It's, like, it's not exactly a cover that's selling itself. 
That's not helping either. <laughs> it's like, the board in that, it's like a collection of browns and greens. Seriously? When, when does brown and green ever go well together? Except for a tree. Okay, fair enough, point taken. But, you know, in this, it's not a looker. But it's a solid game. You've got different paths to victory, different scoring opportunities, and it's very, very tactical. And that's one thing I love. You've got the actions, you've got the, you've got the cards, you've got the debate board, you've got the voting sort of room where everybody is like voting yay or nay on these constitution uh, symbols that are being voted for, you know, the different uh, pages. And you're trying to get certain symbols to pass for yay or nay based on what your end game sort of goal is you're aiming for. But you can score based on certain card combinations, you know, like set up the board in a certain way and you can score points. So you spot opportunities every now and again that you want to go, well, I was going to try and get this one passed. But you know what? If more people vote no on this, especially from Massachusetts and, uh, I don't know, find another one, uh, Delaware, is that one? Uh, New York, New Kansas, I can't remember. I'm not very good with American states, I do apologize. But the... You know, you get these situations where you think, well, I was voting yay, now I want to vote nay. You know what? Vote has changed, I'm doing this, and it throws people off. But you have your reasons. You're trying to score points in lots of different ways. It's a solid euro, one to two, well, one hour, not really. But, uh, you know, you can get this done in two hours with three or four players. Five is a bit too chaotic. I'm not a fan of that. But three or four, particularly three, is a brilliant number to play this with. And it is very enjoyable, despite being a historical theme. And you know me, I don't tend to go over the whole factual historical thing. But for some reason, this one just sings to me. And I have not brought it to the table in a while because, well... Would you play this game? It's like, it's hard to sell it. I have to sell it based on the theme and the mechanics alone. And if they're not interested in the theme, then all I can do is get them engrossed in the mechanics. Because let's face it, the color ain't gonna. Well, number five is a great hidden movement game. It is a classic one that got reprinted recently. And well, um, do you like color? Then don't play this game. <laughs> because you're not going to find any. You might find little bits of red, little bits of blue. If you're lucky, it's all like hidden in the back somewhere in a corner. But I hope you like black and white. Because that's pretty much what this game is. It is basically just grid maps and a lot of black and white. But, even though it's not in my top 100 anymore, it is still a quality hidden movement game, Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. Now look at the cover. I mean, there's your shade of blue there. It's like trying to poke out from all the black void nothingness. And then it goes back to black and white. It's a very stark looking game and it's scuffed as all get out because black unfortunately does not work very well for, um, you know, black, you know, white bordered stuff, you know, doesn't scuff as much. But yeah, it's a pretty bare bones rule book as well. Not much color there. You know, there's, there's a little bit of red and blue. Look, a little bit of blue, a little bit of color just there. But then you get the, the um, dry erase pads, okay? That's your dry erase pad. Record here, abilities here, and the map here. Yeah, it works, the graphic design is there, and everything is crystal clear. Can't fault it for that, but it's still pretty ugly. However, still really good fun because you forget about how ugly this game is because of how much fun it is. It's, you know, like I say, not a top 100 anymore, but you know, you're more concerned about the fact that you are writing down where you've been and where you're going as you try to get to these escape pods while aliens are trying to eat you. And nobody knows where anybody is. Even the aliens don't know where the other aliens are, which is quite amusing when they eat each other. But you're trying to get to an escape pod and it might not even work. You might get there and it's broke and then you've got to try and get to another escape pod before someone else. And it is tense and stressful as, oh, get out, but in a great way. Especially with some of those really claustrophobic maps. I've had one where you're like in this tiny little corridor. It's like two bits wide. And I have literally been against the wall like this. Like, okay, nice alien, pass, pass, nice, nothing to see here. As it literally sort of walks past me. And I'm just like frozen in place. And it's like, if I get a truth card, I am screwed. You know, it is such a good tense amount of fun. Now, it doesn't work for everybody, and certainly you can end up with some games where it sort of ends a bit abruptly, and that whole thing about getting to an escape pod and having it break on you can spoil it for some, because it's like they've done nothing wrong, just luck of the draw. You have to know this going in. But, whether you like it or not, looker, no. At number four, we've nearly caught up to where it was last time, yeah, seriously. 
But this is my answer to Fruity Ages that I have spoken about many times. Fruity Ages, the fourth edition, now looks pretty good. It's very colorful, even though it's mostly pushing cubes, it still looks nice and the artwork is nice and colorful. So fair props, it's a better looking Civ game. But the length of time it takes to play just the two player version of it is kind of a bit annoying and a bit of a put off. This one though, I can play less than three hours with up to at least four players. I've even tried five players and granted that takes a little bit longer than three hours, but that's five players. Fruity Ages can take multiple hours with two. And frankly, because you've now got the app, who needs the board game? The app is just so much better than the board game. But I digress. This one, however, is my answer to Fruity Ages from a board game standpoint. There's no app for this, unfortunately, but uh, oh well, can't have everything. Although, oh, sorry. But then do I really want the app for this? <laughs> Nations, I still really enjoy this game. It's still solid fun. It's, you know, you've got that Civ experience, you know, with the worker placement on buildings, you know, do I want to build, do I want to go expand in the colonies, do I want advisors, do I want to build wonders, should I just get military buildings so I can go start off wars and get good on military, or should I be peaceful but stable so that if a war happens I don't particularly care, am I going for money, am I going for food, am I going for just straight up victory point generation? So much cool stuff you can do in this game, and with the Dynasties expansion thrown in here, not only do I have a different action I can do, but I also have multiple starting setups. There's already five in the base game, you know, for Egypt, Europe, Egypt, Rome, Greece, you know, the basics. But now I've got Americas and the English and the Vikings and the Zulus and all sorts of different like, you know, factions that you can play, all with very different starting setups and sort of geared past the victory. Such a cool Civ game of this. It doesn't get enough buzz. I swear it's underrated, but well, I say underrated, I think it's still in the top 100 actually on Bulging Geek, but I never see anyone play this. I'm like the only person in the UK I seem to think who has this game, you know, because I've never seen it hit the table. And granted, I haven't brought it to the table in a while, although I have noticed it's a solo game as well. I forgot about that. Idea. <laughs> you know, maybe something to do later, but I still really enjoy it. Still really solid, really cool Civ game, but the artwork in it. <clears throat> Is this selling it to you? Probably not. It's pretty dire artwork. I mean, you, you have a very basic looking player boards and very basic uh, you know, point scoring tracks, but even the card artwork itself is pretty dire. It looks like something that probably even I could draw better and I cannot draw to save my life. You know, if you ever played a game of Telestrations with me, trust me, if you're sitting to the left of me, I apologize in advance, but even I feel I could do better than this, you know, it's some pretty bad artwork and it does make it hard to get to the table because people look at Fruity Ages and it looks nice and colorful and crisp and clean, even though it's like, you know, fairly basic. But here it's a put off the fact that it doesn't look as good, but I still urge you to try it if you have not. If you want an alternative to Fruity Ages, then look no further than Nations. Just maybe close your eyes when you look at a few of the cards and just read the text, you know, it's still not particularly great. So, number four, really like it, but also really ugly, Nations. Ah, oh, caught up. Yes, I did my 10 through four twice. <laughs> this is gonna be a long day of recording. Oh well, needs must, show must go on, so just know how hard I work for you guys, eh? Dedication. My number three, this is a game I never thought I would like. I mean, it's, it was a designer I'd never even heard of before. I know now that everyone's looking at underwater cities and it's like, oh yeah, you know, you gotta try this game. And I still not yet played underwater cities. I wanna try it. Does look ugly though, and certainly does look like it takes too far too long for my liking with the downtime. However, I will try and get it played at some point, hopefully when a retail release comes, you know, in bigger sort of distribution. However, the previous game that the designer did, never thought I would like it. I thought, okay, you have robbed all sense of theme from this game. You've made it look but ugly, really but ugly, despite some pretty little colors thrown in every now and again. No theme, dry as a bone, point salad. Well, I like point salads, okay, I'll give it a shot. It's in my top 20. I don't know why, but this game just surprised me to no end. I think it's the only Czech Game Editions game in my collection. I'm probably correct on that assumption. But yeah. What happened? Seriously. You know, Pulsar 2849, I love to bits. It's a top 20 game for me. I don't think it will ever make top 10, but 
I love playing this game. There are so many options I can do from flying around the, you know, the different planets and exploring, getting bonuses for transmitters, you know, building the arrays, uh, putting the gyro, what was it, the gyrodines or whatever they're called, you know, the spinny things around pulsars and getting points through there, the different technologies that change every game, you know, the variety in this game is ridiculous. Different end game scoring conditions, your HQ board, and I can't remember, is there an expansion ever coming for this game? I if there's, if there's an expansion for this coming, can you let me know in the comments? I'm not aware that there's any, but yeah, I mean, oh, you could just give me more variety and all the stuff and I'd be perfectly happy. But, as much as the theme is super dry, and every now, it's also not exactly a looker. The cover itself is uh, not exactly selling it, you know, this bit of purple and mostly sort of blandish white. But then you look at the back, and it looks okay at a distance. I mean, this is why this doesn't make my number one as such, because you do at least have some colour. But it's fairly sort of garish across the board. I mean, uh, it's pretty basic. It's not really... You barely even remember you're in space when you play this game. It's not a looker by any means. You know, you've got very basic dice, and, you know, just basically half-decent graphic design... And not much else. But, despite me thinking that it is ugly, and I think some people will probably defend this and go, oh, it's not that bad. You know, in fair play, it's a subjective list. But the amount that I love this game had to propel it further up this list because despite the fact that everything about it suggests I should hate this game, especially, like I say, its look, its aesthetics, but I don't care. Love it. Such a good point salad experience. You know, take note, step and fail. This is how you do a dry point salad. You cut me deep, Shrek. You cut me real deep just now. Give me lots of options, but don't constrict me. Don't punish me unnecessarily for doing something. You know, reward me for doing everything. But, you know, maybe it's not the best thing to do in the game, but at least reward me. Don't punch me in the face when I do something wrong. You know, it just, why does this work for me? I don't know, but it does. Really enjoy it. You know, it makes me want to try Underwater Cities, which I have to say, if that actually looks uglier than this one, but like I say, not played it, so it couldn't qualify for the list. But the level of enjoyment I get from this game certainly had to propel it up, despite the fact that I think there's probably slightly, you know, some uglier games on this list compared to this one. The saving grace of this is the fact that you do have some colored, like, neon lines across the board, so it does almost kind of look like a, a sort of 80s disco rave, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it's not winning artwork awards, you know, for anybody, I don't think. So, I had to make this list. Pulsar 2849. My number two, I've recently backed on Kickstarter because it is getting a collector's edition soon. Yes, I'm spending the money on Kickstarter, certainly at the moment. But, yeah, this has been long overdue for an artwork revamp. And granted, when it does come out, it would not qualify for this list because the new version looks a lot nicer. But the current version that I have that's on this list is a highly enjoyable city-building game. Great game. I love it. Much prefer it to the uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig, even though that is on the shelf as well. But the one that came before it, Building a city, managing your population and managing your income, different variety of buildings, the expansion made it even better. Great, great game. But is anybody really saying that Suburbia is a pretty game? There's your prettiness. The cover. It's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. And then you get to the tiles. The tiles, yeah, this is not a particularly great looking game. For something that's supposed to be about city building, you want your city to look good. And you've just got these very basic tiles that are colored, but then have artwork that I think Sim City in its old days did better. They really do not look good. Not a looker at all. But such a fun city building game. I think this is my favorite city building game. I mean, let's not count things like Caverna, where you're building a farm and stuff. Uh, no, if we're just going straight up city building, I think this is my favourite one. Hence, I backed it on Kickstarter for the Collector's Edition. I want a nice crate. I want all those. I want that extra expansions. I want those revamped tiles, the upped component quality, the tweaks to the rules. I want that. But most of all, I want that revised artwork. I want the tiles to look much nicer. And granted, it's not like they're going to win awards, the new stuff. 
but it's more vibrant color and the artwork is certainly a lot more like eye popping on the table. This one doesn't pop any eyes, unless it's with sharp blades. It's really not a looker at all. But, you know, and like I say, that's one reason it propels up this list. There are games on this list I like better than Suburbia, but I do really, really like Suburbia. But yeah, those tiles, they're pretty ugly. Not a looker at all. I mean, there are city building games that look much nicer than this, but they don't quite live up to the gameplay experience that Suburbia gives me. So almost made my number one, but there is a game that is uglier than this one that I still adore, still really adore, but Suburbia certainly had to make number two. No offense, Bezier Games. This is a fantastic game and you should try it out there if you have not played it. But, yeah, thanks for doing a collector's edition. It's about time. And my number one, I'm gonna have to go a bit of a distance to go fetch it, but this is a card game that I still really, really like. It's a solid card game, one of my favorites. I only play it two player, because playing it with three or four is just weird and takes too long, but as a head-to-head -head card game, so much fun. It's a shame I can't find enough people to play it with me. But a lot of that is down to the look. The second edition that Yellow put out a while back was decent artwork and it looked a lot better, but the graphic design took a plummet as a result and the box storage solutions were horrible. Those weird little boxes, the things didn't fit in them well, bad idea. The I've now got a deluxe version from the third edition of this game, you know, it's got the decent enough storage, it's got all the expansions and I still love this game to bits. But, yes, I have to resort to the Asmadi ugly version and you're gonna hear a little noise because I think I'm gonna drop these. Oh no, we're good, we're good, we're good. Ah. Innovation. Okay, a gold in both box. Not exactly looking apart. But have you seen um, Innovation? Innovation is a fantastic card game from Asmadi Games and I love it a bit. It's tactical. What strategy? No strategy. You have to react to what cards you've got, what the opponent's got, and you've got to be able to go back and forth. Multiple winning conditions. Love this game to bits. Such an amazing card game. Oh my god, does it look ugly. <laughs> it's like, it is, it is an abstract card game and it looks the part. You're basically looking at a fairly muted colored card with very basic font, uh, no artwork whatsoever. It's all a graphic design and it's basically a bunch of squares with symbols on it. The second edition at least tried to put some artwork with the game and kudos to Yellow for trying, but you need better storage, you need to support the game more and you certainly had to not sacrifice graphic design because the symbols were sort of all over the shop. Here, the graphic design is better, you know, it, it works, but you have to sacrifice the artwork. And it's just, yeah, not a looker at all. But, whereas games in the past like Ethnos and that were ones that I didn't want to bring to the table again, I want to bring this to the table as often as I can, seriously. If I knew some innovation players near me, I'd be wanting to meet up with them on a regular basis and play this game. If this had a solo mode, I'd be playing it all the time. I really want to play innovation more. It's a brilliant card game, I love it. But I'm not gonna deny, it is one of the ugliest games in existence. <laughs> it is so bad. I wish I didn't have to make do with the third edition, but I've got all the expansions in here. Everything stores in here fine, doesn't take up much space. It's uh, In fact, there's probably too much space in this box even for what's in it, because I don't sleeve the cards. But it's such a cool card game, I just wish I could get better artwork for it. Because this version certainly does not. But despite that, it's a top 20 game for me, I think. Certainly love, love, love innovation. So. That's it for another top 10 list. I've got a bit of a headache just trying to get this list together thanks to recording it twice. But, you know, note to self, look at the microphone on button in future. It's on the back of it though, which is a bit problematic. I have to double check these things. But, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things. I'll get over it. But first, Patreon. Yes, uh, before I go into my honorable mentions, I want to mention the Patreon choice this week. There were some interesting ideas. Uh, but, you know, Terraforming Mars appeared, and I can see that. It's uh, pretty ugly screen caps. You know, the board doesn't look particularly great. You know, just brown everywhere. 
the uh, like the artwork on the tiles and everything is very bland. I mean, there's a reason why everybody spends so much money upping it with 3D tiles and stuff. It's because the normal version looks pretty bland. And there were some ones that agreed with my list. I mean, some people did mention uh, uh, Suburbia, which was quite cool. Uh, Dominion was another one. However, the one that got the most votes on this occasion, I did consider. I did consider for this list, you know, uh, it was about my 11 or 12, probably my 11, but I sort of thought Automobiles was just a bit uglier than this one, mainly because of the way the board looked. And granted, this is not the nicest looking game in the world, but it's cartoony. It's I don't mind cartoony artwork as much. It, it's colourful. It, it at least has colour, but yeah, it could do with a revamp. Or the Mania. You know, I did consider it. Automobiles, pit this one out. You could interchange the two if you like. If you don't like automobiles being on here, then swap it with Automania. Because I admit, it's pretty basic, but it's got color. It's not black and white. It's not beige and browns or anything. And I don't mind the cartoony artwork because it's not meant to be taken that seriously as a game. But yeah, I'm not going to defend that this is a looker amongst games. It's pretty bad artwork and it has put a lot of people off wanting to play it because of the way the, uh, the game looks. So it deserved to be a pretty good Patreon choice. But Ultramania is a great game. It, it was the top of my underrated games list. You are building cars throughout the whole game. This is not one of those Euros where it takes you the entire game to build one car. Here, first turn, you can go and build a car. And then you'll be trying to meet the demands of Europe and American markets. You know, like you've got these um, discs that say whether people are after safety, environment, uh, speed, and um, what else is there? Uh, luggage space. And depending on where you see these demands coming and, you know, which one's got more in that, you'll tailor your production lines to meet those demands. So starting off with, you might make supercars that are stupidly fast and effective. And then later on, it's like... Oh, now everyone's getting a bit more interested in luggage space. Fine, here's my SUVs with all the luggage space in the world. Like, there is more room for luggage than there is a person. You know, and the last time I played this, literally a couple of days ago at PortalCom, was I played it and I was making supercars that were safe and environmentally friendly, like two or three things on the line were to do with environmentally friendly. I made the most environmentally friendly supercar you could ever think of without going full electric. Would you buy that car? Probably not. But that was what the European market wanted, and so I won via that. But yeah, I'm not going to deny, it's not a looker, so good Patreon choice there. Other honourable mentions I thought of, uh, Trieste, uh, Victory Point Games. It's a cool card game, I don't play it that often though, but yeah, that's pretty ugly. I mean, this was the old days of Victory Point Games. Uh, Santa Maria. Yeah, I, it's starting to fall a little bit in enjoyment. I don't know how much longer it's going to sit in the collection, even though I've got the expansion for it. Probably a waste of money buying the expansion, I suppose. But, you know me, I like completionist. But, yeah, Santa Maria, not great. And it's another of Porter Games. I mean, the Porter Games don't tend to do very good on their aesthetics, but they make some decent games. Uh, Gaia Project. Yeah, I considered that one at first because I thought it was like fairly basic in how it looked, but I didn't think it, compared to the rest on this list, I thought it was a bit unjustified. And yep, Automania was an honourable mention. I did think of this, this, that could easily be my 11. And Deus was another one, actually. I thought Deus was uh, pretty ugly as well, but I don't know. The fact that you've got so much colour all over the place and those cool little teardrop uh, land hexes and that, it, you could probably make Deus maybe my 12 or 13, but, you know, I didn't think it deserved to be a top 10, like, for ugliness, because at least colour does make something look nicer. You know, muted colours and browns and beiges and blacks and whites, you know, they're not fun to look at. At least, you know, I can say that, uh, uh, you know, what was I talking about again? The Deus, you know, at least I can say that one looked colourful. It's not a bad thing, is it? Ah, oh, well, you know, <laughs> it's all subjective anyway. People have different ideas as to what's uh, ugly, what's good looking. It's just eye of the beholder. It's just what do you find good looking? Now, this is a cool subjective list, so I want to see what your comments are. You know, whether, whether you disagree with mine and or not is entirely up to you. But I want to hear if it wasn't on this list, what do you consider a game that you find really ugly but yet you still really enjoy it. Because I'm interested to hear what people say. And to be honest, I'm expecting a few Euro fans to be sticking in pretty much everything by Stefan Feld and probably 
GMT games and probably splotter games. I'm expecting a few of those to appear or an 18xx here and there because let's face it, whether you enjoy those or, or not, you've got to admit they don't look good. Does anybody play a splotter game and say, oh yeah, the artwork's amazing? No. You play it because you love the mechanics. Fair play. Not for me. But you can't say that it looks good. Food Chain Magnate? Really? 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 That's it for me. Next top 10 is going to be top 10 worker placement games. You know, I said I wouldn't do too many of these genre ones, but I feel that... It's such a saturated genre that I think it kind of deserves a top 10. And I think you might be surprised of some of the ones that appear on that list. But then we'll eventually do my top 10 annoying traits in gamers. A personal tongue-in-cheek list I've wanted to do for a long time. And certainly the drought of decent releases in games is going to give me the opportunity to do just that. So that's it for me. If you like what you see, then please subscribe to the channel. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter. You know, the end credits will show everything. Or by all means, find my Patreon campaign because it all helps to keep the channel running. Hope you like what you see. Give me some criticisms if you feel there's something that can be improved with the audio and the visuals and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, season three is getting underway and I'm happy to still be here. Take care and remember as always, it's only a game.